Hey YouTube, this is Professor Cummings and I wanted to do another video uh, for the semester on uh, this time we're going to go to rotational motion with kinematics and I want to do an example problem. If you want to see some of the back backlog or other information on this topic, I've done quite a bit of the uh, setup information in the past in a playlist for you know kinematics and dynamics. It's a, a Quite a, quite a few hours in it of just work on this one. So let's go through this one example. It is a cord is wrapped around a wheel, which is initially at rest when theta, you know, angular position, is equal to zero. If a force is applied to the cord and gives it an acceleration equal to 4t meters per second squared, where t is in seconds, determine as a function of time two things one the angular velocity of the wheel and the angular position of the line op in radians so here you have a cord my mouse in order here so here you have a cord you know it's got 0.2 millimeter or excuse me 0.2 meters in, in uh, diameter or radius it's rotating looks like clockwise and here's your cord you pull upon a force of the cord and you have this acceleration of the cord, so this tangential acceleration. And they want to find the angular velocity of the wheel and the angular position of this line, this cord, in radian. So how much is it going to move uh, as, as you pull on this cord? And all of this is in a function of time. So acceleration is expressed as a function. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. You know, we're going to use a typical engineering format to solve it. So what have we been given? We've been given an initial angular displacement. So we're, we're saying this starting point is, is at zero radians. Uh, the tangential acceleration is 4t meters per second squared. And the radius is uh, 0 0.2 meters. So we have a few of our dynamics equations. So this a sub p, you know, this the point that's on the uh, that we're going to use as our marking point, you know, uh, at sub t is equal to alpha, you know, our angular acceleration times your radius. So the calculation for your tangential acceleration is equal to uh, your angular acceleration times the radius. You know, your angular acceleration is also the derivative of omega with respect to t. And omega is your angular velocity. And your angular velocity is the derivative of uh, theta with respect to time. So d theta dt. So those are all of our, our equations we're going to use on this one. And let's see. So the first thing we're going to have to do is convert this this tangential acceleration to an angular acceleration and then from there we're going to be able to get the function for our velocity and our position so we set up this solution so again we have our, our first equation to try and set up and get this angular acceleration a function for angular acceleration so we solve for alpha so we divide both sides by the radius and this function divided by the radius is uh, 4t meters per second divided by 0.2 meters. Meters cancel out, and we have 20t uh, radians per second squared. So that's our angular rotation, the function for our angular acceleration. Now, we also know that our angular acceleration, you know, this second equation, is the derivative of, of our angular velocity with respect to time. So we can go ahead and solve that for d, d omega is equal to alpha dt, multiplying both sides by dt. And we're going to have to integrate both sides of this equation. So again, starting from our initial point to whatever point of angular velocity we're looking for, the integral, the, the definite integral, is equal to the definite integral of 20t, or angular acceleration with respect to time, from zero to whatever point in time. Go do the integration on both sides. You know, the integral of uh, dt is just going to equal to, or excuse me, d omega is just going to equal to omega. 
you know, from from omega to zero would just leave us to to omega. It's equal to again ten, and then you add t uh, one to the exponent, you know, so it'd be t squared divided by the new exponent of two, which leaves us with ten t squared radians per second. So that is our function for our velocity. So now we have to now find a function for our angular position, which means we're going to use this last equation. So d theta uh, over dt is equal to omega, which we know we just solved is 10t squared radians per second. So now we're going to multiply both sides by dt. We end up with d theta is equal to omega dt. And we're going to integrate both sides again from 0 to theta, which you know has never been specified, and from 0 to omega, which again was the initial, um, whatever our initial position. They never gave us the, the final position, so we're just going to stay to that, to that final uh, angular velocity. So again, so 0 to theta, you know, theta uh, is equal to 0 to omega, omega dt, go both sides, you end up with theta is equal to 3.33t cubed. Right. And again, I could have changed that to, you know, I just, I had omega, but I, you know, 10t squared, you know, 10 comes outside the uh, infinite sum t uh, cubed divided by 3, you end up with 3.33. So that is, you know, the, the first problem we're going to do. And, you know, I try to do these uh, probably once a week, once or twice a week. Um, you know, any questions, leave something in the comment or you know, any other type of problems you want me to tackle. Uh, but this is Professor Cummings, and I'll talk to you in the next video.